Hi, welcome back to West Coast Geeks. I'm your host, Joaquin. How we doing, people? You know who's with me. Hey, what's up, guys? All right, my boy, Eric. So today's video is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, First Edition, Part 9, Alignment, Only Way to Keep the Murder Hobos. Oh, so, murder hobos. Yep. So real quick, um, I'd like to uh, give a shout out um, right, Scarn, because it's S A A R N eighty one Scarn. So I'll read the comment mm -hmm. to you. Like, love the video, cool. guys. Well done. Uh oh, I like some short adventures, counter ideas, travel. Well, you're in luck because I've already uh made or is about to make a video. Eric won't be part of that because what. It, I get into the Underdark, it's going to be more on like the creatures and certain things, especially the. I won't do it in video. <laughs> you better not. So I was like, what the fuck? I said, you're going to leave me out of the Underdark? So, um, yeah, I've, I've, I've got this. You know, I got a little, I got to follow up to this because um, this is the plan that we're not going to stick to. I'm, I'm telling you, this is the plan. Um, it's going to fall apart. Yeah. Um, First, I'm going to stay on top of this because I go, well, how long ago was that? I go, it seemed like it was like two, three months, no more than four, six months, going on seven months later. Six months later. <laughs> yeah, I was like, damn, dude. Um, so this is the plan. Uh, we're currently doing the player's handbook. Eric and I, uh, our schedules are jacked. I work days, he works nights, right? So that's why we're having a problem uh, recording, and then we both have lives on the weekend. I want to hear those comments. <laughs> like, just recording the weekend. Like, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, we still have to do the Giants, D1 uh, through 3, because the those giant. are the first official Advanced Dungeons and & Dragons. And don't give anything about B1, because B1 is not Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. B1 is part of the box set before Advanced Dungeons no, no. Part of the box set later. Yeah. Not as it was released. Yep. Yeah. And even uh, B2 is the, which came out afterwards. Um, That's not even part of Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. That's still part of the basic. That goes to the world they called it. Like, start with M. Anybody, no idea. Yeah, anybody knows, put it in the comments. Thank you. Um, um that's so, gonna bug me now. Oh, <laughs> that's gonna bug me too. Mysteria or mis something, something mis around mis there. No, M Mistara was one of the gods in Forgotten Realms. Oh, uh, that, that. Weird... there's something. Either way, leave it in the World comments. Help Eric and I out. We're getting old. We can't remember. We're not as old as just for kicks. Actually, older than uh. both of us. <laughs> to get a shout out to him. Um. So then we're going to be doing really concentrating on the um, the Underworld when we get to D1, because that is the first time in all of Dungeons and Dragons history that I'm not saying for a fact, but I'm saying this for a fact, that the Underdark is mentioned. So, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Was wait, it mentioned in the again. white box set that I don't know about because I never read any of that? The Underdark? Yeah. Uh, I don't recall. Leave that in the comment below, but just know that I, I'm referring to Advanced Dungeons. Sure, no, there was Underdark in check. Was some kind of Underdark in uh, in Chainmail or any of that? I don't think so. No, it wasn't even in Greyhawk. I don't if I don't I don't remember. No, this is before Greyhawk. Yeah, no, I'm trying to think when the Underdark was first introduced, though, because Greyhawk That's D1, was... Descent into the Earth. Was that... Oh, and that was Greyhawk. Well, it, I mean, it's not part oh. of Greyhawk. Oh, sorry, that was kind of loud. Blackmore. That was the world. Okay. Did they mention the Underworld? There's a the documentary underworld? on that. No, oh. no, no. no. The, the first world before Greyhawk? Yeah. New world, it was Blackmore because I remember they, they made a documentary of it. Yeah, but that's not advanced. That's the original Dungeons and Dragons. You were talking about the one in the box. Yeah. From the box set. Yeah. So it began with M. It was yeah. Blackmore. 
I don't know. Still leave a comment. We're talking about B2, the uh, keep on the borderland. What There was like a world that that was supposed to be along with, like, one and all the B, like, base stuff that been hmm. top of my head. Look, we are going to be talking about alignments, people, and the point yeah. is we are going to be, yeah. I have my notes for the underdog. Track. Yeah, this Near is how we, this, how we get an hour video than uh, Dallas, Eric's wife. You'll be yeah, it'll be <laughs> one in the morning recording videos. I'll be like, motherfucker. You'll be telling him to tone it down. All right, so we've already spent five minutes on the intro. That's a little bit too long, but um, Joaquin's thanks for. Fault. Yeah, it is my fault. But, you know, I mean, I yeah. just wanted to give sh a few shout outs and let you know the, the direction that we're going. And um, here, so here we go. Uh, alignment. Right. Eric, take us away. Wait a minute, hold on. Chaotic the alignment. Oh, the here good, we go. The Look bad and the go. ugly. Right. Ah, <laughs> then don't they say <laughs> don't they say you son of a bitch? And then they have the son evil. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You son of a That's Tuco, dude. Yeah, I love Tuco. Fucking, uh, what was his name? Not Eli not Eli Wallach. Was it? I don't even know the actor. It's Eli Wallach, um Clint Eastwood, and fuck, what was the guy? What was the Oh, Lee Van Cleef. Yeah, Lee, Lee that Marvin. Been a lot of movies. They're like Van Cleef or Lee Marvin. I can't remember one of those two. I can't, I get their names confused. But yeah, those were dope, dude. And Tuco was just uh, that dirty, grimy. I love he kept his pit. He kept his pistol on a fucking string around his neck, dude. I know, dude. That, that's gangster. Oh man, those are that's, great movies. That's poor gangster. All right, here yeah, we was, go, that people. That guy was gnarly. Alignment. All right, here we go with alignment. After generating the abilities of your character, selecting his or her race, and deciding upon a class, it is necessary to determine the alignment of your character. It is possible that the selection of the class your character will profess is predetermined as a predetermined... Oh, hold on. That messed me up. It is possible that the selection of the class your character will profess has predetermined an alignment. A druid is neutral. A paladin is lawful good. A thief can be neutral or evil. An assassin is always evil. Yet, except for druids and paladins, such restrictions still leave latitude. The thief can be lawful neutral, lawful evil, neutral evil, chaotic evil, chaotic neutral, neutral, or even neutral good. The assassin has nearly as many choices. Alignments possible for characters are described below. Chaotic evil. Major precepts of this alignment are freedom, randomness, and woe. Laws and order, kindness, and good deeds are disdained. Life has no value. <laughs> most 5e e e player Life has no value. Yeah, most 5e e player character. Okay. Right? By promoting chaos and evil, those of this alignment hope to bring themselves to positions of power, glory, and prestige in a system ruled by individual caprice and their own wins. Got it good. Creatures of this alignment view freedom and the randomness of action as ultimate truths. They likewise place value on life and the welfare of each individual. Respect for individualism is also great. By promoting the gods of chaotic good, characters of this alignment seek to spread their values throughout the world. Chaotic neutral, my personal favorite. Above respect for life and good or disregard for life and promotion of evil, the chaotic neutral player or the chaotic neutral places randomness and disorder. Good and evil are complementary balance arms, neither are preferred nor must either prevail. For ultimate chaos would then suffer. <laughs> <laughs> Is <he> the Joker? <laughs> oh man, that's great. I don't know. Lawful evil. Hold on, I gotta, get, I gotta jump over to the next slide. Oh, 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 oh. my oh, word is my bond. That. Look at that. Man, fuck that, chaotic okay. neutral. Okay, so lawful is my word is my bond. And how do you pronounce that um, symbol? Dictum, ma'am, pactum. Just say dick. Tom. <laughs> dick, don't be a dick. I was like, we know it's like dictum. Like, oh, dictum, man. Dictum, word. It's Latin for word. I know, but you know there are gonna be people out there be like beat the butthead moment. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Dick." He said, All right, dick. I don't mean to. Uh... <laughs> I 
took the show there. I didn't mean to, but I did. All right, go ahead. Lawful. Hold down, Beavis. Lawful creatures of this alignment, well, the lawful evil. Creatures of this alignment are great respecters. I didn't know that was a word. Of laws and strict order. But life, beauty, truth, freedom, and the like are held as valueless or at least scorned. By adhering to stringent discipline, those of lawful evil alignment hope to impose their yoke upon the world. Darth, well, good. Darth Vader. Lawful good. While as strict in their prosecution of law and order, dun, dun, dun. characters <laughs> of lawful good alignment. We're so showing our age on this video, dude. <laughs> 2000 watch that shit all the time. I mean, be like, <laughs> this is Keith Clowns mentioned Beavis and Butthead. Did right, a dick so joke. It's be a bad pop nerd. <laughs> ah, it's, it's late, folks. It's midnight. Yeah, it's bad pop Delirious. culture night. All right, go right. on. All right. While well, strict in their prosecution of law and order, dun, 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 characters of lawful good alignment follow these precepts to improve the common weal. Certain, certain freedoms must, of course, be sacrificed in order to bring order. Truth is of highest value and life and beauty of great importance. Benefits of, of this society are to be brought to all. Lawful neutral. Those no, of no, this no, no, alignment... No, I got I got switch. You got lawful right there. It's still lawful How neutral. How does this affect me? Oh, no, um, right. Then we're going to have neutral. I'm sorry. Lawful neutral. But I'm going to get your shit together. Those of this alignment <laughs> view regulation, that's all important. Taking a middle road betwixt good and evil. This is because the ultimate harmony of the world and the world of the universe and the whole of the universe is considered by lawful neutral creatures to have its sole hope rest upon law and order. Evil or good are immaterial beside the, beside the determined purpose of bringing all to predictability and regulation. Boring. Now, we, now, now go to neutral. Okay. Yeah, so it's like, how does this affect me? And right. neutral is like more of a balance. Like, they, they described it a little bit earlier, chaotic neutral. But um, the reason why druids are neutral because they look after the forest, and the forest is their, they consider the forest their home. And so... Or, or it, any natural state. Yeah, or any hills, natural area that they look at, look after they at their home. So, if you come in and say, look, orcs, especially if you, if you were, like, in the forest, orcs are going to be coming by the forest... We we seek your aid because they're going to attack the village of the farmers. The druid's going to be like, oh, well, are they coming through the forest? No, 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 no. They're coming by it. We need your aid because all these villagers will die. And, you know, one of the druids would be like, the same villagers that come in here and keep cutting down our sacred tree. You're like, yeah, you don't have um, to those people. Yeah, you're like, not all of them do, you know. So that's how it, you, you kind of like role play. It's like neutral. the ants. Yeah, like the ants in Lord of the Rings, they were like, "Ah, we don't want to get involved." But then they saw what Saruman did to the woods, yep. the Ironwood. Oh, what was it? Iron is it Ironwood? Yeah. Yep. They were and like, "Wait on. a minute, bitch! <laughs> uh, you brought this to my house, right?" He's like, "All right, that's it. We're gonna take down Orthanc." Yep. All right, so here we go. Neutral evil. Right, neut neutral evil. This is this is the most evil. This is worse than chaotic evil. This is worse than lava. Neutral evil is just straight up bad, dude. Think so? Let's, let's read the Oh, this yeah, and we dude. Can talk about that. Neut yeah, neutral evil. The neutral evil creature views law and chaos as unnecessary consideration, for pure evil is all in all. Either might be used, but both are disdained as foolish clutter, useless in eventually bringing them. Bringing maximum evilness to the world. That is a weird description yes, for somebody. That's, that's neutral evil. Neutral evil is basically evil for evil's sake. Not for, you know, lawful evil and, you know, for order and all that. Or chaos evil just spreading random mayhem and chaos. This is just, we bring evil to the world. Fuck law. Fuck chaos all about evil all in all that's a pretty definitive statement dang man that's, i've never considered it that way but then again i haven't read this book in like 20 
Yeah. Neutral evil, <laughs> I thought, has always been the worst. I think that's I think that's Thurman, man. <laughs> uh, Thurman's more chaotic neutral too. No, oh, I'm sorry, man. He almost he's derailed, one of the evils. derailed the campaign last night. All right, real quick. Uh, we're <laughs> currently <laughs> playing Curse of Strahd. He didn't derail it. You gave him that fucking option. I did, but I didn't you think he would. Turn... Known better. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me set it up. So they're playing Curse of Strahd. Strahd has invited them to the dinner. So, uh. He he's going around to certain members trying to see who would join forces with him to see if there's any weak links. So the first person he approaches is Morona. And he knows by now that she's a necromancer. And he offers her power and to be an agent if he turns on the party or agrees not to, you know, go off and do what he wants. So she turns it down. Then um, I charm Eric because Eric was being rude that at the dinner. And me off, what dude. was your I'll plus eat. seven on again? Yeah, yeah, no shit, dude. I had like a plus, plus five, four, seven. Yeah, I had like a plus seven or plus eight, dude. On wisdom, and I used advantage. And he used his uh, used his um, inspiration. And, yeah, inspiration. Got to beat a seventeen. That's a hard roll because it's from Strahd, so they they bumped it up. Still needed a ten. All I needed was a ten. Yeah, a fifty-fifty yeah. shot. Actually, I had more than that because I had two dice. I rolled twos. <laughs> I was like, "You son of a bitch!" So, so now, Eric, who's playing this uh, lizard man, is a guado from the jungles. Kind of a little bit uncouth. That's the word that Strahd used. I feel, and so I'm, just, I'm, just wait till you see what I, how I bring the party to to join him. So, wait, I'm planning it. And so, um, he puts Eric in his place. So now Eric's sitting upright. He put me in no place. He uses foul magics. So, um, he also broke a rule, in the sense of, I made a demonstration. Yeah. I opened up the fog, and I let Eric go back home to his home to the Forgotten Realms, or this area in the Forgotten Realms. And then Eric called plane. me out. You know, he was like... <laughs> Don't Eric forget I'm a GM, dude. <laughs> yeah, so Eric calls me out. Mr. Rules Lawyer here. <laughs> and he goes... Mr. Rules Lawyer, just wait a minute. That's not how the spell works. Yep. And what did I say? Fuck your rules. I said, I don't care. He, he said, it's more like a guideline anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like the pirate's code. It's yep. more of a guideline anyway. So I told him that, I'm, you know, in this case it works. And because you're only there for a moment. And so I brought him back in. And um, here's, uh, here's Thurman agreed. Now, Discord <laughs> That was and amazing. Discord and my computer were trying to update and do different things. I kept, like, just dropping the volume. Not only did he agree, and then it dropped the sound, but he got up and did he roll for an attack? Yes, I told him to attack Mora. Ma Ma or, uh, what's her name? Yeah, I told him to. Because I go, um, Strahd would, goes, yep. why don't you I improve your loyalty and attack Moro here. Marona, Marona here. yeah. And I was like, do it. I said, roll that initiative, Therm. I said, roll that initiative. And he fucking rolled to attack. And, you, and your voice was out. I'm like, dude. I said, Joaquin's losing his shit right now because we can't hear him. And he's just going to see dice rolling. Yeah, I, I looked at that. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, getting back on. I was, I was like, like, oh, the DM is down. <laughs> All this chaos erupted. DM is down. <laughs> Chaotic neutral. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, just like. Damn, dude. So then I had Strahd, because this was not the first time that uh, Thurman has derailed a campaign. <laughs> even the third, yeah, not even your DM. Not even for you. <laughs> yep. And so I thought about it. And I was like, you know, we could end Curse of Strahd right now. And we yeah, can move on. It, or else it would have fucking gone off the rails. It would have been glorious. That would have been like, the fight's going to occur. And um, not between us and Strahd, it just would have been us. Yeah, and you know, and I'm just oh, like that would have been amazing. Oh, it's just been like, no, not yet. 
I spent way too much time and research and prep work no, for this campaign lie. to be derailed <laughs> this way. So what I did was, like any good DM will do, you think quick on your feet. Yeah, I learned to no. adapt. I told him, I said, God looks at you and he goes, no, I do not want anybody who is greater to serve me. <laughs> I expect loyalty. And so he put him back in his place. Now, now, Eric at this point is still advocating, let's attack him. And I'm just like, shut up. <laughs> I'll kill this bitch. I said, I'll end, I'll end it right now. I'll fucking end this whole fucking thing. Yep. This guy. So, yeah, alignment does come into play. Um, most of the most of the players in my group are pretty much adhering to the alignment that this goes. And um just for the most part evil in a fucking Ravenloft campaign. I was so mad. Yeah. Because I was ready to be my lawful good as a as a mere fucking cleric. Yep. Yeah, uh quick note to any future first of all, if you're like if you've only got a couple of games under your belt or a few like sessions, or even if you only got two or three months of experience, I would not recommend still trying to tackle on Curse of Rod. There are so no, many a... variants, even in such a even in such a big sandbox that they give you. You know, things can just get out of hand so quick, and player characters yeah. can go off in different directions <clears throat> you don't intend them to go off into. Yep. All right, so enough about that. I... We covered alignment. Rod stayed true to himself. DM didn't allow Thurman to fail the campaign. And Eric sat there quietly and ate his meat. So quietly. Oh, I, I, I spoke plenty because I know he reads my mind. I gave him plenty to understand. All right, neutral good. Right. Neutral good. Unlike those directly opposite them, neutral evil, in alignment, the creatures of neutral good believe that there must be some regulation in combination with freedoms if the best is to be brought to the world. Most beneficial conditions for living things in general and intelligent creatures in particular. True neutral. The true neutral looks upon all other alignments as facets of the system of things. Thus, each aspect, evil and good, chaos and law. This is written weird. Thus, each aspect, evil and good, chaos and law, of things must be retained and balanced Maintain the status quo. Things as they are cannot be improved upon except, except temporarily and even then, but superficially. Nature will prevail and keep things as they were meant to be, provided the wheel surrounding the hub of nature does not become unbalanced due to work of unnatural forces, such as human and other intelligent creatures interfering with what must with what is meant to be. This is written really weird. Yeah, the, I mean, All that, that weird first... situations and they use wheel and then wheel, like different spelling, W-E-A-L and yeah. Naturally, there are all variations and shades of tendencies within each alignment. Descriptions are generalizations only. A character can be basically good in its true no neutrality or tend towards evil. It is probable that your campaign referee will keep a graph of the drift of your character on the alignment chart. Oh, I miss alignment charts. This is affected by the actions and desires of your character during the course of each adventure and will be reflected on the graph. You may find that these actions are you find that these actions are such as to cause the declared alignment to be shifted towards or actually to some other. Changing alignment, or involuntary minute, change of alignment. Changing alignment, a rare occurrence. Changing here. alignment, just a dragon. In this fifth edition, in the back. In the Sorry. fifth edition, eh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, that's because these whiny little bitches want to be able to do what they want without any consequences or repercussions. There'll be consequences and repercussions. All right, we're getting to the wrap up. So, changing alignment. Changing alignment, while involuntary change of alignment is quite possible, it is very difficult for a character to voluntarily switch from one to another, except within limited areas. Evil alignment can be varied along the like axis. The neutral character can opt for some, some more specific alignment. Your referee will probably require certain stringent sacrifices and appropriate acts. 
possibly a quest as well. For any other voluntary alignment change, here we go again. In fact, even axial change within good, within evil or good, or radial movement from neutrality may require strong proofs of various sorts. When you hear that, what the hell does that mean? Yeah. Further voluntary change will be even more difficult. Changing back to a forsaken alignment is the next to impossible on a voluntary basis. Even involuntary drift will bring the necessary will bring the necessity of great penance and furious anger. <laughs> All right, so yeah. now we got the wrap up. So the next part is part ten, the establishing the character. So that's gonna include like character hit points, character language, establishing the character, money, equipping the character. Um we're kinda gonna be cherry picking the information. There's a lot of stuff where I'd really I'd rather be talking more about yeah, the equipment. I mean, like I can this. go through the equipment, but I'm not gonna go like how much. Yeah, arrows, normal, ale, single, one silver piece. Two, so, yeah, Just... he's not gonna go through all that, and we're not gonna read the weight and damage by weapon chart. No, not... Oh, <laughs> you're not gonna, you're not gonna read the uh, the weapon initiative modifier. <laughs> That's not in Side. this book. Oh, no, that I, is. You're right. Oh, yeah, that's the next page. No, we're not doing that. I love either. initiative modifiers. I wish I could find a chart. I would use it in my campaign. You just got to look in your player's handbook. It's on page 38. We're going to read it. Speed factor? Fifth yeah. edition? Base required, speed factor, armor class adjustment. I, I, I think it just slows the game down too much. If you wanted to, okay. I would use it for more for, like, inspiration and... Uh -huh. um. Come up with like a simplified version. Like, yeah. um, if you if you swing a great weapon, then you oh, would have like a minus. They have it divided. Well, no, have like it divided in the book, small weapon, simple weapons, martial yeah. weapons. But anything yeah. like a great weapon that's heavy it should or, be slow, or man. heavy or heavy crossbow would be like minus one to your initiative. Like, shit. That's minus how three. that's how you would like you know you know balance. If you carry, like you said, like a dagger or a short sword or a finesse weapon. Now, why is some fool with a great two-handed sword going faster than me that I've got little fucking darts? Exactly. So you, you know, dagger, you can make yeah. those adjustments. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll kick in also um, hiring henchmen time and, oh, henchmen's. and distance in the monster term. So that's why we're not going to read. Well, we. That's why Eric is not going to read all those stats what cherry pick some stuff um because it's just like it'd be like triton four to eight feet space required yeah. one feet yeah Defect it was bad enough six reading six to all, the, eight. all the spell levels man armor class adjustment well that that was kind of necessary minus three armor class adjustment to armor class three minus two you know to go through all yeah, that that would you drive me crazy <laughs> Yeah. It was actually almost putting me to sleep looking at this chart. Going, right? What? I'm like, oh, I'm like, this read this, this, man. That was a really good piss. It'd be like two hours <laughs> later. <laughs> two hours later. So then, Bill Gizarm. <laughs> yeah, so then after that, the next video after that will be character spells. And we will be starting off with uh, clerics. And we're just going to do it level by level. So... First level cleric spells, first level or second level cleric spells. Yep, all the way through to get to oh. the end of the book, and then we'll break those up in the section. But um, yeah, we got, some, we got some cool things coming down the pipeline. Um, when Eric doesn't have to work night shift because he just got off of work to do this video, it's actually twelve forty eight. Shit, so, well, we're gonna turn be back. Yeah, while we're wrapping this up, so. Um, any, like, I, like, everybody, not everybody, but I've noticed that a lot of modern 5e players, and including DMs who have YouTube videos, want to get rid of alignment. And, um, why do you think that, just, Eric? I think it's a, just a reflection on days, times, and societal gifts. You know, nobody wants to, nobody wants to be beholden to any kind of ideal or, or anything like that you know they want to be able to do whatever i, I want to do whatever i want well no bitch if you're lawful good you're not doing what you want yeah 
just people, you know. <coughs> I don't I just want the easy way out. Yeah. Now, you know, alignment is just another stricture to give your character a more guided kind of, I don't know if you would say focus or path, I guess you could say. But yeah, people, oh, I don't want to use alignment. I want to be able to, basically, they're saying, I want to be able to do what I want. I want to kill somebody and be evil one day. I want to be able to do that. I want to give gold to, a, to an orphanage the next day. I want to do that. No. Yeah. No, and it, Can't I, have it all. Yeah, that, I totally agree with when it comes to that. And um, I think older DMs who come from like Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, third edition. Want to use initiative, initiative bonuses and negatives on yeah. their weapons. No, no, it's not that. I'm, I'm just talking about when it comes to alignment. <laughs> Oh, I know, but you said older DMs. I said they want to use initiative bonuses and minuses on their weapons. Yeah, no, no, dude. That, that just slows the game down, dude. Keep that. Oh, it don't? If you know, okay, look, I got a longsword. I rolled initiative. Oh, minus two. That's minus because one. we just broke this down. They had a chart that you had to look at, and it was minus two off of an armor class. Yeah. We, I just made that very simple. That anybody, you know, could look at and be like, well, why don't we just break it down this way? That's just a common sense approach. Well, yeah, but a dagger isn't going to affect chainmail the same way it will plate armor yeah, or leather well, you armor. you know what? Then you're adding in too much. <laughs> then you're you adding in. What? You're adding in too much realism, which is another video I want to do. Like, how much realism should you allow realism. players to make the argument for? Like, we all yeah. know that if you're wearing. So. If you wore full plate mail, you also wore chain mail underneath it, correct? That was part of the full plate, yeah. Yeah, so underneath is chain mail. So you got your full plate, and there are gaps. And underneath the gaps, like under your arm yeah, and, and joint, other places, basically. there is chain mail. So the okay. odds of you getting a sharp dagger through there and really hurting them, I'm not talking about where you just slightly cut them or even get in a little mm -hmm. bit. Like, really getting in there and puncturing their lungs to do substantial damage is probably going to be really hard. I don't know what the odds are on that, but good luck. Um, as opposed to a sword, which you know, has more power and thrust to it, and a sharper, not I won't say sharper edge, because it's a sharper edge. It's just, a, you know, you don't want to be getting into that and, um, and having realism into. Uh, Fact of well, that doesn't make sense. Now, once That's you start, why I like encumbrance. Yeah, it's like once you start encumbrance puts greedy fucking characters in line. Yeah, I I, I wish I could bring back encumbrance with this group, but that ain't gonna fly. Uh, you should. You well, you know what? Maybe for I still follow encumbrance. I fight, I mark all my shit. If I have too much shit, nope, I throw it away. Yeah. Now maybe in um, the next section of, our, of my yeah. home. Um, That's why we got flat but, bags but, of holding. Um. <laughs> yeah, these are these are like you know, alignment is I I feel for me it's still important for dragons because oh. they have really moved away, especially five e. They have Guide really moved character. away from heroes in the game. Even though if you read any of their starter books, they usually imply that or probably even come out say you're the hero, but they don't really enforce it. And there's no but. You know, at the same time, I'm not saying that you can't play a rogue who just looks out for himself instead of playing some kind of Robin Hood rogue. Or yeah. that you can't play a um a chaotic neutral ranger. Those type of things. It's just that when the majority of your party doesn't have a motivation to help anybody in this in Dungeons and Dragons exactly. where the whole Point of the game is to be a hero and help people and, and go off on adventures. Part of a group. Yeah. That's the hardest thing. You know, you get you get groups of people that you know, every man for themselves. Yeah. Dude. You like know, like you just, heard earlier with that Strahd thing, man. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I you know, and I think Thurman just wanted to throw you off too. He did, but he got like, I told dude. I told Eric the next day, I was like he, you know, he tried to test me, but he fell short. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he fell short because you, you had to change. You had to do the Strahd had to do the one eighty, not Thurb. No, because um, 
There was nothing I could do against that. I mean, there was nothing. That's what I'm saying. He he fucking he was like, oh, he throw, I'm I'm not saying he didn't throw a, a <laughs> big size gremlin, you know, monkey wrench into the plans. <laughs> I mean, that dollars. almost derailed the campaign. That's how you ended. And when he Christmas. said yes, I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> I was like, damn. It's like, even Greg. I know Greg was shocked by that. Not, like, yeah. completely shocked because he, he seen Thurman and heard some of the tales. But yeah. I don't think he expected that coming. And Greg does well, a do. lot of, like, improvision. And he does a lot of things that um, you wouldn't expect people to come up with. That's why I like him as yeah. a player. But I think even he was taken back. I was I I had a feeling like Thurman's gonna fucking do it. Like I'm sitting there, I'm like, wait and see. I'm like, do it, do it, do it. And then he did it. I'm like, yes. Because <laughs> I totally I totally would have done it if I were Thurman's evil character. I would have been. Yep. I wouldn't even fucking roll. I would have flipped that table over as soon as he said to do it. Uh, I was like, flip the table over. We're done. Let's go. Yeah. So um. Made my strength check. Yeah, I mean that's that's alignment. He was playing to his alignment. What is he lawful evil? And that's what he said. He and he even said like his character. You know, he's like, I trade one master for another. It doesn't matter to me as long as I serve. Yeah, I was like, yes, that was a good line. I did like that yeah. line. I heard that. I was like, that's yeah. why I was like, damn, dude, I should give him instant points for that. But he, <laughs> you like, just called me on my shit. Yeah, he did. I was like, that's pretty cool. I mean, I. Yeah, I agree no with his with his logic that he used, but I was just like, "Damn, dude!" Like, man, come on! You're supposed to be a hero. That's the problem. Nobody's a hero. Yeah, and that and that's the problem with running evil characters. Right? Yes, Which we're exactly. gonna get if more into the that. Evil campaign. The video's already at 37 minutes, so um. Oh shit! Yeah, I gotta get going. Yeah, you gotta get going. Good morning. And so, with that, people, I hope you enjoyed this conversation about alignment. And uh, we're giving you the examples, some really good examples of how, you know, player characters use alignment, justify their actions. But, you know, in 5e, a lot of these players, they just do whatever they want. All right, Eric, <laughs> final words are yours. Oh, I'm good. Time for night night. Night night indeed. All right, then, people, catch you later. See you guys.